I'm Greg Hurrell. I'm back with another Vim screencast. Um, this one is going to be about splits. Uh, splits are a pretty large topic, so I've prepared a bit of a table of contents here. And I don't think I'm going to do it all in one go. I'm probably going to split this up into two or three different segments. But let's start with the basics. Um, a lot of this will be familiar to you, but I'm just going to show this to you just in case you are not aware of it. But we can create horizontal splits with colon SP. Vertical splits with colon VS. Uh, you can also use other shortcuts like Control WS to make a horizontal split um, and Control WV to make a vertical split. I actually never use those. I'm totally in the muscle memory of using the colon commands there. Uh, once you've got a lot of splits, um, you're going to want to manage those splits somehow. So uh, I'm going to turn off wrapping just to make this look a little bit nicer. There we go. So to manage the splits, uh, there are two things that you're going to want to do fairly often. One of them is closing a split. Um, the obvious way to do that was with colon Q, which is how you would quit out of any buffer. I do that often enough that I've got it bound to leader Q. Um, so in my case, leader is space. That means leader uh, space Q will close a tab, uh, close a, a split, sorry. Uh, say that I want to focus on one of these splits. I've got a few of them open. I realize, yeah, this is the one I want to work on. Uh, the most simple option I have for that is to use the only command, uh, which can be abbreviated to colon on. Um, and that's another one that I do often enough that I have it bound to leader O, so space O in my case. Uh, and so that's one way to focus. I'll get on to another way uh, a little bit later. Um, something I've been doing implicitly without really commenting on it this whole time is moving between the splits. So. The conventional way to do that is with Control W followed by H, J, K, R, L. Um, and they work kind of as you would expect um, Vim movement keys to work. Uh, it's fairly common for people to remap those, and I have remapped them to Control H, J, K, L right, because it is something I literally do a thousand times a day. Um, so that's how we move between splits. You can obviously also click if you have your Vim correctly configured to work in the terminal inside Tmux, um, which isn't hard to do, but I'll be covering that in another screencast. So that's movement between splits. Um, I guess it's also important to uh, be aware that there are other ways to open splits that do not involve manually slicing your, your buffers in Windows. Uh, so let's take an example. Just say I open a fuzzy file finder like Command T and I want to open, say, some matcher code. Um, if I hit Control S, that's going to open in a horizontal split. If I want to open, say, the private file in a vertical split, I'm going to do Control V. Um, I could also open in tabs, but I'm going to deal with tabs in another screencast. Um, in a previous screencast, I showed how to use Nerdtree Find to reveal a file in a hierarchy. Um, and we could open any one of these files in a split as well. So the default action just hitting enter is going to be to open it in the current split, but I can do GI to create a split. And a lot of apps or plugins have this functionality. Um, so you, it's just a case of looking in the help and figuring out, okay, how do I open this thing in a split? Um, so an example of those, uh, one of those would be, for example, the quick fix listing that is built into Vim. So I'm gonna use my ferret plugin to find a bunch of files in this project. And there they are in the quick fix listing. Say I wanted to open one of these in a split, I could do control W enter. And when I do that, you're gonna see something a little strange. You'll see that it opened below. Um, the reason it opened below is because I have split below set. Um, I also have split right set. These effectively mean that anytime I create a split, it's gonna to try to make it appear below the current buffer. Um, or if I'm doing a vertical split, it's going to make it appear to the right of the current buffer. And uh, the reason why I do that is because it feels more natural to me. So for example, if I make a vertical split here, it's going to put me over on the right side. Um, and likewise, if I make a, a horizontal cut here, it's going to move me down below. That feels natural to me, but it does mean that when I try to open something in a split from the quick fix window, it's going to open below, which is pretty strange. Um, and the reason why this doesn't end up bothering me in practice is I tend not to open things in splits from the quick fix listing, because what I'm usually doing is skipping through these items one after another, um, uh, using the up and down cursor keys that I have bound to CN, which is short for C next, um, and CP, which is previous. So up and down, take me through the matches. 
right takes me to the next match in a file that is the same as colon cnf and left is the same uh, basically it does the opposite left takes me to the previous file which is the same as colon cpf but basically because this affords me with a way of quickly moving between the files or the matches rather i find that i don't actually care to open things in splits because this is really about me quickly scanning through something and doing a bulk operation and not creating like a curated set of splits that I'm um, going to be working with for a while. So let's get back to my table of contents here. I think we've covered pretty much everything there in the basic operation section. So I'm going to cut it off here and I'll be back shortly with the next chunk on splits, which is all about how to size them.